Hello and thanks for joining us. We continue our Hopeful Healings Bible Study series. Now, those of you who have uh, been watching with us and watching these Bible studies, you might notice that my background has changed. One of my joys, and I use that word joy loosely uh, during this pandemic season, is that I had to move um, and had a very short window to figure that out. And so um, this is, um, I'm in my new living room, and so I'm, we're, we're thankful for that. But I uh, just thought I would say something about the background changing here, um, and we continue in this series. This morning, we're going to look at um, a story from Second Chronicles uh, chapter 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, is where we're going to continue our Hopeful Healings uh, devotional and Bible study series. So as you turn there, let me pray for us. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, as we turn to your word, speak to us, um, Lord. Uh, speak to our hearts as we are in need of hope and we are in need of healing. Might we discover a bit of that in this time of study and devotion this morning. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. I'm going to start here. We're going to jump right in. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I should give you. Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love for my father David and have made me succeed him as king. O Lord, let your promise to my father David now be fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people, for who can rule this great people of yours? Let me read that again, verse 10. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before your people. Verse 11, God answered Solomon, because this was your heart and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you and have not even asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may rule my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after shall have the like. So Solomon came from the high place of Gibeon, from the tent of meeting to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. So Solomon, the, this, uh, the, the son of David, the next king, God says, I'll give you whatever you want. And he asked for wisdom and knowledge. For God, your people, to, to lead your people, what I need is wisdom and knowledge. He doesn't ask for riches and, and wealth and honor and glory and victory over his enemies. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. And this surprises God. You see in the text, it, it, it's uh, surprising to God. So God ends up giving him all the other things, which I wish God wouldn't have, just give him wisdom and knowledge. But, but that's the way the text plays out. That's what God decides here. Um, and But it surprises God that Solomon would ask for that. Now, you might think, where's the healing in this story? And what I want us to do today is to think of healing of our world, healing of our nation, healing of our society. And we are so in need of that. I, I know you've been joining me in, in praying for our world Um uh, and uh, not just healing from the coronavirus in our world, but, but healing of uh, certain kinds of, of uh, challenges that we see in our world. You know, during this time in the U.S., the poverty um, and joblessness and, and those sorts of problems that we see. Um, we see uh, some racism in our world. You know, there was a guy here in San Diego area wearing a KKK hood the other day as his mask at a store. And, and uh, saw uh, on the news a young black, uh, young black man who was shot um, and, and killed uh, running through a neighborhood um, in the South. And, um, 
see Asian American folks, uh, friends of mine from our own congregation, people around who are being um, uh, pointed out um, and uh, because of their Asian descent and maybe this is where this virus came from. And we see those kinds of, of ills. We're, we're, we're praying for a healing for our world in so many ways. Um, and the, the hope, uh, sort of the, the healing agent that we receive here is, is that Solomon has been healed from a misguided path. Now, David was a wonderful king. Um, and as a wonderful king, it meant that sometimes he did some wonderful things and sometimes he did some not so uh, wonderful things. I mean, just go back and read the Bathsheba debacle and, and uh, you'll, you'll see that there were times in which David in his leadership was misguided and all of us fall into that, right? There, there are times in which we can uh, come to believe that our way is the best way or is the only way. Um, and David certainly wandered into that at times in, uh, while he was king. Though he was chosen by God and anointed by God um, and placed into that monarchy by God, there are times in which he takes the reins himself and he becomes guided by what he desires and not necessarily by what God desires. And so this movement to Solomon and this first prayer of Solomon and, and his petition to God is a healing of a misguided path because Solomon recognizes we don't need stuff. We don't need my way. We don't need our way. What we need is God's way. And the way we get God's way is by receiving God's wisdom and knowledge. And so there's a healing in this story for the, the culture, um, for the world, for the nation of Israel. Um, and perhaps it's a way in which we can begin to bring about some of the healing that we seek in our own world. Um, that we put down our path, we put down our way, we start argue, stop arguing about the best ways and rather begin praying for God's wisdom and knowledge, and there could be a healing perhaps that happens in the midst of that. Um, but one of the things that's always stuck in my mind is in college, I had the opportunity to take a comparative religions class. And so um, it sort of compared major world religions against one another, and it was an opportunity to learn from the other. And one of the things that, that has always stuck in my mind is um, from uh, a Buddhist perspective, um, they, there's what's called the Noble Eightfold Path. And I wanted to read that, uh, those eight things for you. So, so from uh, the, the Buddhist perspective that these would be, uh, sort of think of them as stepping stones to a noble kind of life. And I like <clears throat> the way that they've set this out. So here's the eight things. Right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Now, when Solomon prays for God's wisdom and knowledge, I, I assume these are the things that, that God would provide, this, this uh, sort of right way to be in relationship to all, all these, you know, the way we see the world, the action we take, the work that we do, the way that we think about folks, the way that we are concentrated and what we're concentrated on. And, and uh, that, that Buddhist perspective has always been helpful to me in just sort of thinking through the, those different stepping stones. But what I want you to hear today is that when Solomon turns his attention to God's wisdom and knowledge, what it allows to happen is for a hopeful healing to begin in the nation of Israel and in the world around. Doesn't our world today, doesn't our nation in so many different ways need some hopeful healing? Let us turn our attention to God's wisdom and knowledge 
and maybe we find the healing that is so deeply needed. God bless you.